Sadly, you all remember me mostly for my flawed and fatal love for Lord Alfred Douglas, better known to me as my beloved, yes, my beloved Bosey. There have been two times in my life when I've had the great fortune to fall in love with two marvellous women. Some years ago, I fell hopelessly in love with the wonderful Mrs. Langtree, better known to you as the notorious Lily Langtree, the Jersey Lily. Lily permitted me my pursuit through the following mad, marvellous summer. Then she gently took me to one side and told me not to waste my time. I wrote a short poem to her, and the last two verses go, Well, if my heart must break, dear love, for your sake, let it break in music, for I know poets' hearts break so. Strange, I was not told that a brain can hold in a tiny ivory cell God's heaven and hell. I got over Lily, and I returned to London, well, I fell madly in love all over again. And this time I married the very gentle, beautiful Irish girl, Constance Mary Lloyd. It might surprise you to know that we were passionately and mutually in love and supremely happy and ultimately blessed with two beautiful children. <laughs> I still so much enjoy being an exemplar of fine dress and a social world of wit, ideas and intellect. The importance of being earnest is probably the most memorable of my works and for some subtle reason of his own by his friends in London as Mr Ernest Worthing is in love with the Honourable Gwendolyn Fairfax, to whom he offers honourable marriage. Now, he's caught, red-handed as you might say, in the act of proposing by Gwendolyn's mother, Lady Bracknell, who, sailing unannounced into the drawing room, spies this young man at her daughter's feet and says simply, Arise from that semi-recumbent posture. It is most indecorous. Miss Gwendolyn, in an elaborate girlish simplicity, for which she's justly famous and indeed feared by her girlfriends, says, but I'm engaged to Mr. Worthing, Mama. Mama, like Queen Victoria, is not amused. Pardon me, but you're not engaged to anyone. When the time comes to you to be engaged, either I or your father, his health permitting, will inform you of the fact. Engagement should come to a young girl as a surprise. Whether pleasant or unpleasant as the case may be, it cannot be a matter she'd be allowed to arrange for herself. I'm bound to tell you that you're not actually on my list of eligible young men. I have the same list as the as dear Duchess of Bolton. We work on it together. But I am prepared to enter your name if your answer should be those that a really affectionate mother requires. Now, do you smoke? Uh, yes, I, I admit I, I do smoke. I'm glad to hear it. A man should always have an occupation of some kind. There are far too many idle men in London as it is. And, um, how old are you? I'm, uh, I'm 29, Lady Brad. A very good age to be married at. I've always been of the opinion that when a man desires to be married, he should either know everything or nothing. Which do you know, Mr. Wedding? <laughs> uh, nothing, I fear. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. You know, I do not approve of anything that tampers with natural ignorance. Ignorance is like a, a delicate fruit. Touch the bloom and his garden. Fortunately, in England at least, education produces no effect whatever. If it did, it would be a serious danger to the upper classes. It might lead to acts of violence in Grosvenor Square. Now, what is your income? Well, I have uh, seven or eight thousand a year, Lady Bracknell. In land or investment? Well, investments chiefly. That is satisfactory. What with the, the, the duties they expect from one during one's lifetime, and those they exact after one's death, land has ceased to be either a pleasure or a profit. It allows one to have position, 
but prevents one keeping it up. I mean, that's all that can be said about land. Well, I, I do have a, a country house as well, Lady Bracknell, with um, land, of course, attached to it. Oh, you have a country house. How many bedrooms? Oh, anyway, that's a detail we can deal with later on, but you have a townhouse as well, I hope. You can't expect a girl with a simple, unspoiled disposition like Gwendolyn to actually reside in the country. No, I do have a home in Belgrave Square, Lady Brack. Oh. What number, Belgrave Square? It's uh, 149. The unfashionable side. Well, I thought there was something. Still, that can be altered, I suppose. <laughs> what, the side or the fashion, Lady Brack? Both, I presume, if necessary. Now, what are your politics? I'm afraid, I'm afraid I have none, Lady Bracknell. I'm a sort of liberal unionist. <laughs> they count as Tories. They dine with us. Well, at least they come in the evening, at any rate. Now, to more minor matters, are both your parents living? I'm afraid, Lady Bracknell, I've lost both my parents. To lose one parent. Mr. Worthing, might be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks to me like carelessness. Now, who was your father? He seems to be a man of, of some wealth. Uh, was he born, as the radical papers would have it, in the purple of commerce? Or did he rise from the ranks of the aristocracy? But, Lady Bracknell, you see, when I said I'd, I'd lost both my parents, it would be true to say my, uh, my parents lost me. You see, I don't know who I was by birth. Um, I was found. Found? Uh, it, well, yes. The late Thomas Cardew, a charitable, kindly man, found me. And he, he, he gave me the name of Worthing because, well, he happened to have a first-class ticket to Worthing in his pocket at the time. Worthing's in, it's in Sussex. It's a seaside resort. And where did this charitable gentleman with a first-class ticket to a seaside resort fend you? Well, I, I, I was in a handbag. A handbag? Yes, yes, I, 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 was, I was in a handbag. I was a somewhat large black leather handbag. It was one with handles, just a, well, it was an ordinary handbag. And in what locality did this Mr. James or Mr. Cardew come across this very ordinary handbag? It, uh, it was in the cloakroom at Victoria Station. It was the Brighton line. The line is immaterial, Mr. Worthing. I confess to being somewhat bewildered by what you've told me. I'm to be born, or at least bred in a handbag, whether it had handles or not seems to me to show a contempt for the ordinary decencies of family life, which well, reminds one of the worst excesses of the French Revolution. Now, as to the locality in which his handbag was found, well, you can hardly expect either I or Lord Bracknell for a single moment to allow our only daughter, a girl brought up with utmost care, to marry into a cloakroom and form an alliance with a parcel. A good morning, Mr. Wayne.